Hey guys, Pastor Scott here. Uh, day six, day six of our Christmas Advent reading. Uh, remember the first 20 days we're going to be doing, uh, 20 days will be just spending uh, time in the Old Testament, looking through the Old Testament, beginning all the way back at Genesis 3.15, and then walking through for 20 days, just, just seeing God speak through the Old Testament and showing us about this coming Messiah, uh, the one that we will celebrate on December the 25th. And today, uh, the title of the chapter is The Lord Will Provide. And guys, my God does provide, but the Lord will provide. And we're going to be reading out of Genesis 22, and we're going to be reading verses 15 through 18. If you're familiar at all, uh, this is where uh, Isaac is being offered up. And by the time we jump into verse 15, uh, it's now now when God is providing that sacrifice. So I'm going to read out of God's word, and then we'll read the book. Here we go. Genesis chapter 22, and we're going to be reading verses 15 through verse 18. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn Declare the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. I love that verbiage. Indeed, I will greatly bless you and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And it begins with this, a, con a contradicting command. You'll notice that the scripture for today is really encouraging, and it is. But the trip from the beginning of the chapter to the end of the chapter is an emotional roller coaster. During the past couple of days, we have been focused on how God is going to fulfill his promise to Abraham through Isaac. He has been very clear on that. But here we get one of the most confusing commands in all the Bible. In verse 2, God says to Abraham, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Genesis 22, verse 2. What? How could this be happening? Doesn't this contradict what God told him about Isaac? Well, sort of. We are actually really blessed to have more information about what God is doing than what Abraham had in, in this situation. When we look at the immediate context of this verse, we see that verse 1 gives us a huge hint as to what is going on. It says, after all of these things, God tested Abraham. Whew. So we know this is a test, but Abraham doesn't. After all, what kind of test would it be if he knew he was going to be, if he was being tested? The test. How is Abraham going to respond to this? God has promised him that he is going to keep, that he's going to keep his family line going through Isaac. And now that same God is telling him to sacrifice him. I couldn't imagine what Abraham was going through, and I could not. But Abraham passes the test. He takes his son up the mountain, ties him down onto the altar, and as he raises the knife to take his son's life, God tells him to stop, stop. Then God graciously provides a ram for the sacrifice to take Isaac's place. An act of faith. As we look over this, it would be easy to get really mad at Abraham. I mean, how could we... How could he be prepared to kill his own son? What father could do that? The short answer is because he trusted God. What's crazy is that even after he walked up that mountain and tied Isaac to the altar, he still believed that God was going to keep his promise to and through Isaac. How do we know that? I'm glad you asked. Look at what God tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, 
Through Isaac shall your offering be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, y'all, from which figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. So you see, Abraham believed that God was going to use Isaac still. Even if Abraham killed him, God would bring him back from the dead. Let's not forget Abraham himself was as good as dead when Isaac was born. God had already proven to Abraham that he could do the impossible. Abraham just needed to believe, y'all. More signs. We don't have to look to Hebrews to see signs of Abraham's faith. There are several signs in Genesis 22 where we can see his confidence in God. First, look at what Abraham said to his servants. Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Did you see that? Do you see that? He says that they are both going to go up the mountain and they are both coming back. Now we could have just, now he could have just been saying that so that it's uh, not to tip Isaac off. But I think it's because he believed that they were both actually going to come back down. Look also at that, at what we, uh, he says to Isaac, Isaac ain't no dummy. He notices that they have wood and fire, but no sacrifice. When he asked his father about this, Abraham replies, God will provide. Again, this could be a way of avoiding the obvious, but I think it's showing us that he really believes that God will keep his word. The sands and the stars. At the end of this episode, God repeats his covenant to Abraham again. This is the first time we see the combination of the promises. He promise him, promises him lots and lots of descendants all through Isaac. There will be so many that he has to use crazy examples like stars in the sky or sand in the, in, in the sea. In case you're wondering, in 2012, some researchers in Hawaii actually tried to calculate the number of grains of sand in the world. They estimated, and now y'all, this is tough. They estimated that the earth has roughly 7.5 times 10 to the 18th power grains of sand, or seven quintillion, 500 quadrillion grains. Not only that, they, but they estimate that there are multiple stars for every grain of sand, which in their words is an unbelievably large number. No kidding. The point is God is going to give Abraham many, many descendants. And look again how God reminds Abraham that every nation in the world is going to be blessed by him. The reflection. Listen to this. Let's highlight two aspects of this passage that will help us reflect on the coming of Jesus. First, we need to see that it is through Jesus that God fulfills the promise that every nation is going to be blessed. As we've talked about it before, God's covenant has always been intended to go beyond just the people of Israel and Abraham's biological descendants. This blessing will be open to all people, regardless of nation, tribe, or language. And the only way that we can be recipients of this blessing is through Jesus. The advent of Jesus is a promise not just to, not just to Adam, not just to Abraham or Isaac, but to the world. God sent Jesus to bring salvation to people all over the globe. Secondly, we need to think about the way that God is doing this. When we look back and remember what God called Abraham to, we need to see that this sacrifice was cut short. God asked Abraham to be willing to offer his son on the altar, but didn't make him carry it out to, the, to completion. He wanted to test his faith to see if he, see if he would do it, but in the end, he didn't have to. We need to feel... We need to feel this tension. We need to realize what a meaningful sacrifice it is to give your own son up as an offering. This should lead us directly to the cross, y'all. As we think about the fact that God promised to send Jesus, we need to also remember the mission that Jesus was sent here to accomplish. He didn't come here just to be born a baby or even to live a perfect life. 
He came here to lay down his life as a sacrifice for our sin. Ultimately, the Christmas season we are celebrating is more than just commemorating the moment Jesus was born into the world, but also a reminder that he came to be our Savior. And that's day six. Hope y'all are enjoying it. Don't forget, I'll put in comments uh, the questions that you can go back and you can listen to. Uh, guys, let's be in the Word of God daily. Man, and during this Christmas season, uh, it would do us all well to be reminded that he came, yes, as a babe, what a miracle it was, but he came to be the savior of the world. Go tell someone the good news. See ya.